Good afternoon. I imagine a world where we can see connections between things that are usually not seen together. And here's how I've created that. So one of my hobbies is playing chess. But I've realized that when I try to explain a move or a particular game to someone who doesn't know chess, they usually don't understand what I'm saying because they're not familiar with the game. It's impossible for them to know what I'm talking about. And I wanted to change that. So what I've done is I've combined two things, chess and piano. And so what I did was I composed a piano piece that's based off a chess match. So to play this piece is my teacher, Corin Ozinian, who is a recognized, a nationally recognized pianist, composer, and he's also a finance advisor. So please welcome Corin Ozinian. Now that you've heard it, you. now that you've heard it, I'm going to give you some background information on that particular chess piece, chess match, as well as how I created this music. So the match happened in 1972, and this was during the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union. So there's a lot of tension, and that tension and that war became a metaphor, the, the chess game became a metaphor for the Cold War. So as you can see, the chess pieces represented the missiles. So it was the, the Soviets versus the United States, and it's Boris Spassky and Bobby Fischer. So Bobby Fischer is from the United States, and Boris Spassky was from Russia. So these were two of the greatest players who ever lived. Boris Spassky had was an extremely versatile player. He could play in almost any situation. While Bobby Fischer had very deep openings, so he had a lot of theory behind his openings, and he had very good openings. And he also had an anxiety field. So what he could do is he could make his opponents feel very anxious and worried. The way he did that was, he probably didn't do this on purpose, but what he did was make very particular demands on the organizers of the tournament. And subconsciously, Boris Spassky, when he saw Bobby Fischer's uh, confidence, he thought he was not as important and that he was not as capable. So subconsciously, that happened. And that was probably a very big reason for, uh, one reason for Bobby Fischer doing so well. And this was the, the world championship for chess, and it was dubbed the, uh, the, the chess match of the century. It was a huge game. So the way I started by composing and transferring the chess piece to a, something musical was I took a chess board and I put a number on every, single, on every single square. And each number represents a specific note. For example, A represents, uh, one represents A, two represents B, and so on. So here's a very simple example. Um, sorry. So I also made many rules, which all the pieces abide by. And this is just to make sure that it sounds musical, because others it would just sound like noise, which isn't, isn't uh, necessarily music. So all the, the pieces abided by these rules. So here's a very simple example. So if a rook were to move from 1 to 5, then you would play a scale from A to E. 
So after that, I kept building on those notes, using some of those notes, some, sometimes all of those notes, to create something that would sound like that move, to, to capture the drama of the move. So I kept building and elaborating on a few notes. And this is the last, the last move that I interpreted. Unfortunately, I couldn't do the whole, the whole uh, game because that would probably take a few years. So I just did 10 moves. This is the last move. As you can see, there are a few captures. So, uh, can you play the last move? So as you can see, I started with just a few simple notes. And from that, I kept building on them. And these are all elements that went into, in, into the composition that I had to think about while writing, writing the composition. I had to think about the rhythm, the dynamics, the drama, the song progression, and the note restriction. I had to think about all these because all these combined is what makes up the composition. And so now that you've heard the composition once, Korn is going to play it again, but this time with the graph. The x-axis represents the number of moves, and the y-axis represents the, the uh, position and piece value relative to their opponent. <coughs> see the graph represented how well Bobby Fischer in black and Boris Baskey were doing compared to each other. So as you can see at the last move there was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of drama. As you can see there was a big spike. That's where uh, Bobby Fischer, that's when he did very well. So this, this is something that I was inspired by. Uh, Natalie Miebach, was she, did, she combined two different things, weather data and sculpture. She took weather data, which usually isn't very interesting, and then she transferred it into a musical score. And then from that, she made it into a piece of sculpture. So it's a very interesting way of interpreting something. So I started by combining two things, chess and piano. And I finished by combining two very different languages. So what languages can you combine? To, make, to combine two different things which have usually not been seen that way. Thank you. Thank you. Great. So my brother Fabian spent quite a lot of time doing this. It was very, uh, very time consuming, very difficult. Um, would you have a rough estimate about how many hours it took? Um, it took a very long time, and the past, over the past few weeks, I was spending seven days a week doing this. And I actually wrote out about 50 pages of notes, wow. and I just picked, most of them, it, they didn't sound right. So I did pick the, the uh, notes that sounded just right, to, to, uh, that sounded just like those moves that interpreted the drama. So one challenge that I also see is that um, you don't want to just codify it. Because yes. you don't want just reporting, you also want to have the emotion that's felt by it. But if you just use your own understanding of your own motion, it may not, someone else may say completely differently and may feel that you have represented incorrectly. So how did you address that and go somewhere in between accurate reporting and then also including the emotion into the piece? How did you do So what that? I did was I started by just taking the notes, which I, those are very uh, specific notes. And then what I did was I just took those notes and I tried to put feeling into oh, it. 
So I tried to blend the two, so it's not just one. Or so you the started other. with a structure which was accurate. Yes. And then you changed it. Interesting. Well, great. Thank you Thank very you. much. Oh, your um, yard fact. You yes. have a chessboard over there. It's a chessboard, and I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs>